welcome to our third nature nuggets on wetlands um, and this one we are going to be talking about some of the mammals that we can see in a wetland and the very first one let's see we're going to talk about is right here one you're probably all familiar with the beaver so the beaver is a very important wetland creature because they actually help shape habitats into wetland ecosystems. So beavers build dams and they chew down logs and sticks or trees and sticks to form lodges and to form dams to help to kind of dam up um, a stream or a river. And that causes the land in front of the dam to flood, which creates a wetland. So we actually call beavers wetland engineers because they're one of the few animals that help change and create new habitat for other creatures as well. So a lot of other animals that depend on wetlands also depend on the beaver. So let's look at some of, have it, some of the beaver adaptations. This right here is a beaver pelt. And beaver fur is really, really soft. And what makes it so soft is beavers secrete an oil to, and they use it to cover their fur. And that oil makes their fur waterproof. So oil um, repels water. So that actually helps keep them warm and dry since they spend such a large amount of their time in the water. So that's a really important feature that beavers have. This pelt is also very thick. It has an undercoat to it. And that undercoat layer, layer is very important for the winter. And in the spring and summer, they'll actually shed that. So one of the other adaptations that's very important to beavers, we'll see in our picture, is their beaver tail. So beavers are known for this flat paddle-like tail um, and that shape helps them uh, steer and paddle through the water. It also helps prop them up while they are chewing down trees to help create their dams and beavers can also use this tail to make kind of a warning noise. So beavers spend a significant amount of time on land, you know, chewing down um, branches and trees and looking for food, um, but they are safest when they're in the water. They're safest from predators. So a lot of times if a beaver in the water sees danger or sees a predator, they will very loudly slap their tail against the water. It makes a very loud noise and that's a warning sign for other beavers to get into the water as quickly as possible. So that's another thing that they use their tail for. And of course, one of the things we can't see on the pelt and we can't really see too much on the picture is their front teeth. So beavers have those really large front teeth. And if you guys have ever noticed, their teeth are actually orange and that's because their teeth have a lot of iron in them. That iron keeps them strong and sturdy for all the chewing that the beavers do. Um, so that's another adaptation that they have those large front teeth that help them do things like this. This is a beaver stick. We can see all the chewing that's been done to this piece of wood. And beavers are um, vegetarians. They feed off of bark and twigs and leaves and aquatic vegetation, things like that. So one of the really awesome wetland mammals. Um, another one that we see sometimes, when we see them here, are our raccoons. And raccoons are really awesome animals. They're very well adapted to a lot of different environments. Um, so some animals are what we call specialists, right? Their adaptations are such that they can only live in a specialized area. Maybe they can only eat one type of food or they can only stand a certain type of climate. And then we have animals like raccoons or coyotes 
who are what we call generalists and they can eat a variety of different things um, and they're adapted more to be flexible and sometimes that's an advantage and sometimes that's not now in the case of the raccoons it definitely has become an advantage so one of the things that makes raccoons a generalist and not a specialist is that they can eat just about anything so raccoons are what we call omnivores right so um, a carnivore is something that only eats meat and then we have herbivores like what i mentioned with our beavers that eat plants omnivores will eat both they'll eat just about anything so this right here this is a raccoon skull and we can tell a lot of, about the animal just by looking at its teeth. So I'm going to put this a little bit closer. And we can see it has these sharp front teeth that are made for biting, for tearing off chunks of meat. And then we can see towards the back it has molars. Like we have molars in the back that are made more for grinding. So this is good for chewing vegetation. So looking at its teeth, and here's the underside of the top part of the skull. Looking at its teeth, we can see teeth that are adapted for, for um, vegetation and teeth that are adapted for meat. So raccoons are adapted to be able to eat both, and that's allowed them to live in a variety of different habitats because they are so flexible with the food that they eat. Now, in the picture... In the picture, we see oh, right there, the raccoon, and he looks like he might be washing his food. So I was actually reading up on this. Raccoons will do this thing where they like to dip their food in water. So ra raccoons, even though they can live in a variety of habitats, they actually prefer living near water sources and wetlands because there is more food available and a lot of times the way they look for food is their hands their palms are very sensitive um, sensitive to touch so they'll be feeling underneath the water and when they feel something that feels like it might be food they bring it up closer to examine it or they they touch it more um, to get a better feel for it so a lot of times what um, a raccoon will do is if there's water nearby it will take it to the water and that water helps their hands be even more sensitive so even more sensitive to touch and they can better feel what that object might be so they're not actually washing their food they're using the water to feel their food better because that gives them a lot of information since um, they gather information about their food through touch which is actually pretty cool so raccoons uh, prefer wetland environments, but they can thrive just about anywhere. One of, or I guess the last animal that we're going to talk about for wetlands, make sure I have, aha, is our moose, which is very special to us in Maine. Um, moose are very big animals. It's not necessarily something we would think about um, being more of an aquatic animal. But moose actually need a diet that consists of both, of both um, terrestrial vegetation, so plants that are on land, and aquatic vegetation, so plants that are in water. They need both in order to get the right amount of nutrients that they need. So they actually have some adaptations that are good for wetlands and for other aquatic environments. So especially during the summer, you can see moose a lot of the times in swamps or swampy areas or lakes or ponds where they can kind of submerge themselves and be in water to help cool off. Because moose, they have a very thick hide, they have thick fur, and that's really good for winter, for keeping warm in the winter, but it's not good for staying cool in the summer. So what they do instead is they seek out these water sources or they can submerge themselves, they can stay cool, they can find the food they need, um, and they're actually pretty good swimmers. So, looking at a moose foot, let me turn it this way, looking at a moose foot, 
but you can see it has this hook that's um, halved and they can actually take that hoof and kind of splay it that way it has more surface area and that creates almost a snowshoe effect so that helps them when they're walking through softer ground like mud for a wetland or in the winter snow um, so that's a useful adaptation but it also helps them swim so they can splay their foot out and they can use that kind of like a paddle like what we see um, animals with web feet do so that's a pretty cool adaptation that moose have for wetland and for water all right so that's just a little bit about some of our wetland mammals in the next video we're going to talk about just a few other critters that we might find in a wetland and just kind of wrap up all right see y'all in a few minutes <laughs>